Okay guys, so welcome back to my YouTube channel. So for today's video, we will discuss another topic for intermediate accounting wherein the focus of the discussion will be accounting for shareholders' equity. So let's start. Okay, so for our learning objectives, so at the end of this video, we will be able to discuss the characteristic of the corporate form of organization. We will be able to identify the key components of shareholders' equity. We will be able to explain the accounting procedures for issuing shares of stocks. And last, we will be able to explain the accounting procedures for the acquisition of shares. So as we all know, the shareholders' equity is part of the statement of financial position under the form of business organization corporation. So let's have first a review the definition of corporation before we proceed to the accounting of shareholders' equity. So as defined in the revised corporate code of the Philippines, corporation is an artificial being created by operation of law, having the right of succession and the powers, attributes and properties expressly authorized by law, or incident to its existence. So as defined, corporation is an artificial being, meaning in the eyes of law, it is considered as a person. So let's say, for example, we have five incorporators. So these incorporators are also called shareholders, and, uh, and they want to form a corporation. So once the corporation is formed, then another person is created. So this person is considered as an artificial being. Okay? So the incorporators are commonly known as shareholders or stockholders. They are called shareholders because they hold stock from the corporation, which is represented by shares or these shares are which represented by their investment, whether in terms of money, property, or industry. Okay? So, as an artificial being, so there are a lot of benefits that being generated or being attached to this kind of person. So, as a corporation, which is an artificial being, one of its benefit is that it can transact on its own. So, meaning they can sell product, so, they can also purchase product without the use of the name of the shareholder, having the right of an artificial being as a person in the eyes of law. At the same time, the corporation can sue and can be sued. So, meaning the corporation can file against to another person, which is uh, either natural or artificial being or another corporation. So, at the same time, the natural person and artificial person can also file against the corporation itself. So, as an artificial being, the corporation also ha has the right of succession, meaning the death of any shareholder will not affect the existing or will not extinguish the operation of the corporation itself. Unlike on partnership and sole proprietorship, if one of the partners or the owner dies or the owner uh, agree not to continue the operation anymore, then the operation of the or the form of that organization will be extinguished or will be dissolved. But in corporation, since it has a right of succession, then the operation will continue even one or two or more shareholders will uh, neglect or will uh, withdraw their ownership on the corporation. So the corporation has also enjoys the limited liability clause wherein the creditors of the corporation cannot go after to the personal assets of the incorporators or the shareholders once the corporation became bankrupt. Okay? At the same time, the corporation can now exist perpetually based on the revised corporate code of the Philippines. Uh, kasi before, the corporation can only exist for 50 years and can be renewed for another 50 years and so on and so forth. Now, the corporation can now exist perpetually as long as it will not file bankruptcy. Okay? So as I mentioned earlier, the owners of the corporation are the shareholders. That's why we have to protect the right of the shareholders. However, in current setup, not all shareholders are the uh, can operate the corporation as a whole because na napakadami nila. So that's why we have to elect a board of directors. So meaning, ang pinaka-boss ng corporation is the shareholders. Then from the shareholders, they will elect a board of directors based on the number of shares they own, uh, as I mentioned earlier, they own shares of stocks that will be used in order to select their board of directors. Then the board of directors will be the one to select, the, as, will be select the CEO or the one who will handle the operation of the corporation. Okay, since you already discussed some of the information of corporation, so let's now proceed to shareholders' equity. 
So, but before that, let's have a quick review of this basic accounting equation to know where the shareholders' equity located under the statement of financial position. So, as a review, uh, accounting formula, asset is equal to liabilities plus equity. So, assets, these are everything owned by the business which can be measured in terms of money. And liabilities are the present obligations. Then, equity is the difference between asset and liabilities which are shown on the statement of financial position. So, the focus of this uh, slide will be the equity side of the basic accounting equation or the equity side of the statement of financial position. So, as we all know, equity is presented differently based on the nature of business organization or based on the nature of the business organization itself. So, number one, we have the sole proprietorship. So, since sole proprietorship is owned by one person, so the equity account is commonly known as owner's equity. And on the statement of financial position, the amount reflect or the account reflected and reflected is only the owner's capital account. So the owner's drawing is not reflected on the statement of financial position because it is closed during the closing process. So next we have the partnership. So under partnership, the, the equity account involved is what we call the partner's equity account and the accounts that will be reflected on the statement of financial positions are the partner's capital which is represented by the capital account of each partner and some of the partner's drawing. So the partner's drawing uh, uh, is composed of uh, the accumulated earnings of the partners which are not yet withdrawn by the partners and which are not yet close to their capital account. Because under partnership, partner's drawing is considered as semi-nominal and semi-real. It is considered nominal if it is closed during the closing process and it's, it is considered as real if it's still reflected on the statement of financial position. So, on corporation, which is our discussion for this video, so since the owners of the corporation are called shareholder, therefore, it is called shareholder's equity. So, corporation in more, is more complex uh, as compared to the two uh, business part of organization because it involves a lot of owners and a lot of transactions. Because as we discussed earlier, it involves a natural person, an artificial person, and so on and so forth. That's why we need to give focus or give emphasis on the details reflected in the shareholders' equity. Okay, so let's discuss the portion of the shareholders' equity. So for easy reference, I made this big box to represent the shareholders' equity itself. And I divided it into three major portions. So to represent naman the three major portions of the shareholders' equity. So don't tie the first part, which is the contributed capital who has the big chunk of the shareholder's equity. So, contributed capital represents the amount contributed by our owners or by our shareholders. So, the, it is divided into two parts. So, the first part, we have the share capital. And the second part, we have the share premium. So, under share capital, we have the ordinary share, which we all know that the share that have voting rights. So, meaning if you want to become a board of directors, then you have to own this kind of share. Another portion under share capital, we have the preference share. So this share has no uh, voting rights but have preference over ordinary share in terms of declaration of dividends. Then we also have the subscribed share in case the share is not yet fully paid by our shareholders. So in case the related subscription receivable is not collectible within one year or the corporation is silent about the collectivity of the said subscription receivable, that subscription receivable must be used as, as a deduction on the subscribed share. Likewise, if the, on the other hand, if the subscription receivable is not collectible or is collectible within one year, it must be reflected under current asset under subscription receivable. So the other portion of contributed capital, we have the share premium. So under share premium, madami po yan, but some of the share premiums reflected on shareholders' equity. So ito po yun. We have the ordinary share premium which is in case when the ordinary share will be issued at premium, so the premium portion must be included on the share premium. And we also have preference share premium, and we also have treasury share premium. In case the treasury share was reacquired, then there, a premium must be uh, recognized. Then marami pa po tayong premium na pag-uusapan, pero ito lang muna yung present natin, then we will just discuss the other premiums when we encounter them. Okay? So the the, another portion of the shareholders' equity is what we call the retained earnings. 
So retained earnings, these are the earnings retained by the corporation since the start of its operation, regardless or gain or loss, di ba? Under retained earnings, we have two major portions. We have the unappropriated return earnings. If we say unappropriated return earnings, these are the earnings available for distribution to our shareholders as long as the board of directors declares a dividend, okay? So another portion, we have appropriated return earnings. So an appropriated return earnings, these are retained earnings appropriated for other purposes. Example of that is appropriated for the purchase of treasury share or kaya naman appropriated for future expansion. Okay? Then the last part, we have the accumulated other comprehensive income. So this other comprehensive income are gain or loss of the corporation but are not yet close to the retained earnings. That's why they are, that's why they are presented separately on the shareholder's equity. This will be further discussed on your future topics on intermediate accounting or kaya naman sa inyong advanced accounting. Just to give you an overview, some of the contents of the accumulated other comprehensive income which are reflected on the shareholders' equity are number one, revaluation surplus related to your property plan and equipment and your investment property. Then number two, we have the forex translation which will be discussed on your advanced accounting subject. And we also have unrealized on, on available per sale securities. Then we also have accumulated gain on loss on defined benefit plan, which will be discussed on your uh, benefit plan related to employee benefits. So these are the components of the shareholders' equity. Then sometimes, uh, if there will be a treasury share, this must be deducted on the shareholders' equity. Because as we all know, shareholders' equity are issued share but not outstanding. Kasi yung nilalagay po natin doon sa share capital, these are the issued share, whether outstanding or not, then we have to reduce the value of that through reduction of the share, uh, the treasury share, which is reflected under the shareholder's equity. So again, shareholder, treasury share must be deducted because share, treasury shares are shares that are issued but not yet out, but no longer outstanding. Okay, so let's talk about legal capital. So legal capital is the amount of shareholder's equity that is permanent in nature and cannot be distributed to the shareholders. This is to protect the interest of our creditors against non-payment of debt since one of the clause of the corporation is that it enjoys limited liability. So it also ad in adherence with the trust fund doctrine. Okay? So legal capital ay magkaiba po kapag ang corporation is a far value tax, eh iba rin naman kapag no far value. So far value, ibig sabihin the investments were uh, divided into number of shares. If we say no par value, so wala pong par value, although in some cases meron po yung stated value. In case the corporation issues a par value stock, so the, lo the legal capital or the contents of the legal capital should be the share capital. So as I mentioned earlier or based on our previous slide, share capital only represents the three parts which is the ordinary share, preference share, and the subscribed share. So in no par value, since no par nga siya, so ibig sabihin, all contributed capital should be part of the legal capital. So again, legal capital, this is the amount that cannot be withdrawn by the shareholders at any time because this is to protect the rights or the interests of our creditors. Okay, so since we already discussed the components of the shareholders' equity, so let's now proceed with the discussion of accounting procedures for issuance of stocks. So, but before that, let us familiarize ourselves with the different kinds of stocks or dif different kinds of shares that we will be encountering later. So, number one, we have authorized shares. So, authorized shares is the maximum number of shares that a corporation may issue. It is reflected on the articles of incorporation. Okay? So, the corporation is not allowed to issue more than it's authorized to issue. Okay? Another one, we have the issued share. So, from the word itself, these are the shares that are already issued to shareholders. And these shares are already paid in full by the shareholders. Then, under issued share, we have the outstanding shares. These are the shares issued and still out in the hands of the shareholders. But if the shares is, uh, even though issued, but no longer on the hand of the shareholder, it is called treasury share. Because treasury share are is issued shares which are no longer outstanding. It is also considered as reacquired share. Then last, we have the subscribed shares. Subscribed shares are shares 
which can only be issued once the subscribers will pay in full. So meaning these are not yet issued share, but still part of the capital stock or the capital share ng ating corporation. So to simply analyze or to simply classify this share as I mentioned on the left, left side, so you can use this diagram. So meaning, let's use this uh, box or triangle as our authorized share. So meaning, let's say for example, the authorized share is 100,000 pesos. So ibig sabihin, the management can only issue 100,000 share because this is the authorized number of shares to be issued. Then, uh, sa loob ng authorized issue, we have subscribed share. So subscribed share because the share is not yet issued, it can only be issued once the subscriber is paid in full. Another one, sa loob ng authorized share, we have the issued share. So these are shares that are already issued to our shareholders since the shareholders already paid in full. Okay? Under issued share, it is divided into two parts because not all issued shares are outstanding. So therefore, we have to separate the outstanding from the treasury share. So, uh, ibig sabihin, the outstanding share, these are in the hands of the shareholders. While the treasury share, these are issued share but no, but no longer outstanding because it is already in the possession of the corporation. So, as you can see on the diagram, we can say that the sum of outstanding share and treasury share is equal to the issued share. So meaning we cannot, um, the issued share cannot go beyond the authorized share and the subscribed share cannot be, is not an issued share. That's why nandun lang yan sa taas. So pwede mong gamitin to if you're having difficulty kung ano ba yung meaning ng ating mga shares na ito.